Hey guys, so today we're going to be making this really cool looping text animation in Blender. I made this animation originally to be used as concert visuals and thought that it turned out pretty nice. Um, this one's pretty simple and I feel like it can be applied to a wide variety of uses or different texts. So hopefully you learn something out of creating this today. So with that being said, let's get into the tutorial. So first things first, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to highlight everything in a new Blender project. Hit X and hit delete. And then the first thing that we're going to add is we're going to hit shift A. We're going to add in some text. And then we're just going to change our camera view to a top view by hitting the tilde key and going to top. Now when we hit tab, what this will let us do is this will let us edit what the text says. So what we're going to do is we're just going to type in whatever we want to type in, which I'm going to use my artist name and do that. And now if we go into the object data properties for the text, we can edit how this looks. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go over to the font tab and we're going to select what font that we want to use. You can use any font files. And now once our font's selected, what we're going to do is we're going to go to geometry. We're going to go and we're going to play with this extrude value so we have some depth to our text. And for this one specifically, I like to use 0.12. And then we're going to go down to the bevel area and we're just going to hit the depth once just to give it a little bit of bevel. And now once our text is done being edited, what we're going to do is we're going to go up to object, we're going to go to convert, and we're going to convert this to a mesh just so this behaves as a normal mesh as opposed to the text one that we were working with earlier. And then what we're going to do for this is we're just going to center it back to our world by right clicking, hitting set origin, we're going to do origin to geometry, and then we're going to go over to our object properties and just zero out all of these, hit the tilde key, go back to our top view, and just center this up to where we want this to be and do right click set origin origin to 3d cursor and now that this is all centered up the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add some array modifiers to this text so it can fill out our scene a little bit more so we're going to go over to our modifier properties and we're going to go ahead and we're going to add an array modifier now the first one is going to be on the x-axis and for that factor we're going to change that to 1.05 and we're going to change the count to six and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a second array modifier to this. We're going to zero out the X and we're going to make the Y factor 1.4. And we're going to go ahead and change the count of this one to 10. And now the next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and we're going to apply both of these array modifiers. So we're just going to go to this drop down menu on the modifier and hit apply. And we're just going to apply the second one. And then we're going to right click, set origin origin to geometry, and then we're just going to zero it all out again. And then we're going to right click, we're going to shade smooth, and then we're going to go to our object data properties, go to normals and just do auto smooth. This will help fix some of the shading issues that are existing. Now for the next thing that we're going to add is we're going to add in a plane. So for the plane, we're going to hit shift A, go to mesh, add in a plane. For this plane, we're going to scale it up on the X by 20 and the Y by five. And then the next thing that we need to do to the plane is we need some geometry because we're going to be adding a wave modifier to this. And for that to work the best, it needs more geometry than the plane initially has. So we're going to click tab. We're going to go into edit mode. Then we're going to hit right click. We're going to do subdivide. Open up the subdivide menu. Type in 100. Tab out of edit. Go back in. Right click. Subdivide one more time. So now that we have our base modeling set up, what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and we're going to start adding the wave modifier to both of these to give it some movement for our animation. And before we do that, we're going to just drag up our timeline here a little bit and we're going to change our end timeline to 240 because we want this to be a 10 second animation at 24 frames a second. So the first wave modifier that we're going to add is going to be on this plane. So we're going to go over to our modifiers. We're going to go down and we're going to select wave. And now, as you can see, if you hit the space bar, we have a wave modifier. But this one's moving too fast, and it's not looking exactly how we want it to look. So we're going to go ahead and mess with a couple of these settings. So the first one that we're going to do is we're going to change the height to 0.3. And we're going to open up this time drop down, and we're going to change the speed to 0.05. So this is going to go ahead, and this is going to slow down this wave modifier a little bit and have it look a little bit more crisp and smooth. Now, so that's looking pretty good so far, but we want a little bit of movement in our text as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a wave modifier to this text as well. So just go ahead to your modifiers and go ahead and add a wave. And now we're going to tweak the settings on this one also. So we're going to change the height to 0.1, open up the time drop down menu again, go to speed and type in 0.05. And now what this is going to do is this is going to add a little bit of movement to our text as well. So as you can see, the text is 
moving with the wave modifier and so is the plane. This just gives it a little bit more interesting elements to this scene. And so the next step that we're going to do is we want to rotate this a little bit. So we're going to hit Shift A, we're going to go to Empty, and we're going to go to Plane Axis. And what this is going to let us do is we can parent both of these to this Plane Axis. So if we rotate the Plane Axis, it'll rotate both of them evenly. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold down Control, we're going to select the text, the plane, and then the empty last. We're going to hit Control P and set parent to the object. And now everything will be parent to this empty. So if we go ahead and we rotate the empty by 35 degrees on the x-axis, they both will rotate together. And now the last thing that we need to do before we go ahead and start shading is we're going to need to add in our camera. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit Shift A, we're going to go ahead and we're going to add in a camera. Now we're going to line up our viewport to about where we want it to be, maybe like here-ish. And then if we hit Control alt 0 on our numpad, it will move our camera to this view, and now we can go ahead and just tweak the rest of it a little bit. So we're going to bring this in just a little bit more, a little bit to the right, maybe down a little bit. And a way to make sure that this is centered, the center point is on this, is if you go into your camera settings and you go to Viewport Display, Composition Guides, you go ahead and select Center, and this will give you these crosshairs so you can line up the center point with your world origins. So we're going to just go ahead and do that real quick. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. So now if we hit space, we can see what our animation is going to look like. So now that our animation is completed, next we need to start shading everything. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to shade our world. So if we go over to the world properties and we click on this yellow dot for color and go to environment texture, this will let us apply an HDRI to our scene. So we're going to go ahead and hit open. And for this HDRI, I like to get all my HDRIs from Polyhaven. They're free, they're very high quality, and the one that I'm using in this video is the Shanghai HDRI. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit open that. And that's going to go ahead and apply this HDRI to our scene. So if we go over to our render view, we're going to be able to see this HDRI being applied. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to want a little bit more light on this scene than what this HDRI provides. So we're going to hit Shift A. We're going to go to Light, and we're going to go to Area Light. And what we're going to do is we're just going to move this straight up, and we're going to scale this up just so it goes over our whole camera view. And we're going to go to the Light Settings, and we're going to change the power to 100. This is just going to add a little bit more light onto our model. So then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to start shading the text and the plane. We're going to start with the text first. So we can go ahead and we can drag up this timeline view. And we can go to our shader editor. And so if we go ahead and we click on our text, and if we hit new, this will give us a new principal DSDF that we're going to edit. And for this text, I chose to use a gold color. So we're going to just drag this over to the gold color a little bit, maybe make it a little bit brighter. Get something around there. And we're going to make this metallic all the way to 1, and we're going to be the roughness to 0.55, and then maybe just tweak the color a little bit more to our liking, maybe a little bit brighter. There we go. So then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to shade our plane, so we're going to click on our plane, and we're going to add in a new material. We're going to make this plane black, so we're going to click on base color and just drag this all the way down to black, and make this completely metallic again, and we're going to bring the roughness down to 0. Now we have these nice metallic shaders for our scene. So we can go ahead and we can go out of the shader window now that everything is shaded. We're going to go back to our timeline view just to make sure that this is looping properly before we go ahead and start setting up our export settings. So if you go to the end here and you hit the space, you see it's jumping just a smidge. And what's happening is if you go to frame 240, 241, this should be the same frame as frame 1. And it's not, so a way to fix that is if you go into your plane and go back into your modifier stack on this wave texture, if you offset this one for this animation by negative 6. And so what this is going to do is it's going to cover the plane at the very beginning of this and at the end of this animation, so it will loop pretty properly. So if we go ahead and hit play now, you can see that this looks pretty good. And so now that this is all done, the last step that we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and we're going to tweak some render settings to have this look as best as possible that we can before we export it. What we're going to do first is we're going to go up to our render properties. We're going to click on ambient occlusion. We're going to click on screen space reflections. And then we're going to click on bloom. And bloom is the only one that we're going to change some settings in. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this threshold to 1. We're going to change the knee to 0.8. 
change the radius to nine. Then we're gonna make this bold color as well to match our text. Just the light yellow works well for this. And then we're gonna make the intensity maybe just down a smidge, just to where we get some glow, but it's not overpowering the scene. And then we're also gonna go down to color management and we're gonna go to the look and we're gonna select very high contrast. And now we can see how this is going to look more appropriately. So we're gonna turn this intensity back up a little bit, maybe to 0.05, just the default. Now that's looking pretty good. So once this is all done, what we can do is we can go into our output properties. We can go down to our file format for the output and we can change this to FMPEG video. Then we're gonna go down to encoding and we're gonna change this to MP4 and we're gonna change the output quality to perceptually lossless. And now for this scene specifically, since it's done in EV, you can get away with pretty much any samples. I just use a thousand, it renders out pretty quickly. It's only about four seconds of frame for my computer. So yeah, uh, you can go ahead and go to output and select your file destination and that's it. So hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and I thought that this was a pretty cool animation. Um, if you've got any questions, down in the comments below and I'll see you in the next tutorial.